Hello everybody, so today I wanted to talk a bit about uh, the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp appeals. Now I'm going to be doing this from an analytical point of view. I'm not going to pretend I'm a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer. I worked in laws for about eight years, um, but at more of a lower level. I have represented myself in a few court cases, one every single one, even in some quite high courts. Never lost a case, um, but I've never represent anyone else. I mean, would you trust me if I'm just someone without a law degree that's represented myself a few times, uh, 18 times actually. But, you know, so you wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm completely ignorant of the law though. Um, but look, I'm just gonna do this from a, an analytical point of view because that's where my specialty is, that's where my qualifications are. So from an analytical point of view, so we have now had Johnny Depp's team have released their appeal. They have three points. And uh, Amber Heard's team have released their appeal and they have 16 points. Now, both of them, they don't have a proper appeals brief yet. It's been misquoted in Vanity Fair that Amber Heard has 16 points in an appellate brief. That's not true. There's 16 points of um, uh, errors or alleged errors that they're contesting. And Johnny Depp also doesn't have an appellate brief. They have three points that they're contesting. Now, so that's three versus 16. And I'm just gonna, again, just do it from an analytical point of view, not from a legal point of view, um, and have a look at those. And I'm gonna start with Johnny Depp. So Johnny Depp's three are essentially one. And the one point is, well, they shouldn't have been listening to the counterclaim of Adam Waldman because Adam Waldman is not Johnny Depp so how, why should Johnny Depp have to pay for what Adam Waldman said now they went into a few other points about this um, which is you know he's an employee he's not a well he's a contractor not an employee uh, it was a legal case it was a le legal argument and a legal argument you can't be sued for a legal argument no matter what it is um, because it's a legal argument he was just saying this is the legal argument. He wasn't stating it as a fact. And nor was he saying, well, this is actually, um, well, he wasn't say, saying, well, he wasn't saying a falsehood. So in order to be defamation, it has to be something you know is false. So if you are saying it and you honestly believe it to be true, even if it is false, it can't be defamation. And the fact is, because they later on won that court case, the one that Johnny Depp was in in USA, the Virginia one, I call it the US one, because I'm not in America. Um, so the US one, they actually won, therefore pretty much proving that he wasn't lying about any of that. So, it wasn't even wrong. Not that he had to prove that, but you know, he's proven that. So, it's all essentially one case, and I think it's essentially one point. It's extremely likely to succeed. Now, I can't absolutely guarantee it, but, you know, from the cases I tried in my own ones, um, really, I was, I got a bit of advice about how to do it from a few other people, and they said, look, essentially, the less points you're, you're doing, the better, particularly with appeals. Um, but really, in any kind of law, you, the simpler you make it, the better it is for judges to listen to, and, and juries even more so. So, you know, you got, one essentially one point split into three versus you've got 16 points the judges are going to get completely confused looking at 16 they look at one that's split into three it's all consistent with each other they're going to go yep 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 that's easy that's easy and it is easy and that's the simple thing now you might say well why does johnny depp want to bother with this and the simple answer is for reputation because he doesn't i mean he's not going to care about oh, an extra two million or you know um, he doesn't have to pay two million back. He's not going to care about that. Um, so he, he's going to get a bit of reputation that says, oh, actually, he was completely clear. He did absolutely nothing wrong. Whereas with that counterclaim, it looks like, oh, he did win, but he still did a little bit wrong. So that's what they're fighting that for. Now, I also want to analyse, before I get on to Amber Heard's, I want to just say some things he could have said. He could have said, what the hell were they doing listening to the counterclaim when he'd won his claim? Now you might think that's the obvious one because 
most legal experts were saying it should have been one or the other or neither. So either Johnny Depp wins or Amber Heard wins or neither wins. There shouldn't have been an option of they both win. But the problem is, uh, and I mean, I think the reason why he didn't do this, if he'd done that, there was a chance he'd lose the whole thing. That wouldn't be a very big chance, but it'd be a chance. Because I think that's a reasonable argument. It's a legally sound argument. But if he does that, then there is a chance that the judges would say, oh, hang on. Oh, no, that's true. We agree that if you win, she shouldn't win. So therefore, if she won, maybe you shouldn't have won. And therefore, they would flip it over. So he's not willing to take that risk. So very safe move by not mentioning that. Uh, the other thing he could have mentioned, you know, that it really should have been 50 million, not 10. And I think that would have been quite sound, but that's actually challenging the jury. And, I, and they've stayed away from challenging the jury because that's a dangerous territory, very difficult to prove. Even though I'd say, personally, the jury completely made a massive mistake in only giving him 10 million. I think they should have given 50. I think the minimum they could have given reasonably is 40. And I think that less than 40 million was the jury not understanding the whole situation. And But they decided not to go for that. And I think that's a really good idea not to go for that because challenging the jury, very difficult to prove. And it would sort of get the the judges, the appellate judges turning against him, saying, "Why?" almost like they'd be saying, you're against the whole process. And I wanted to point that out because when we get to Amber Heard's team's 16, the majority of them are essentially attacking the legal system. Now that's going to look really bad in an appeals court. They're going to look there and go, what the hell are you doing? You're attacking our process. Because she's essentially saying, oh yeah, the jury didn't know what they were doing. The judge didn't know what she was doing. Nobody knew what they were doing. We're right, you're wrong. And that doesn't make an appeals court very happy and they get very angry about such things. Now there are some valid points or more valid points and I think they really should have stuck to these three. The number one is them saying well hey she won the UK court um, case therefore it shouldn't have even been heard. Now they already had a, a case about this before the US one was tried. They also mentioned it mid-trial. Perfectly reasonable to keep mentioning it. I think it's very unlikely to succeed but it's not impossible. So that is a valid one to put in there. And I definitely would have had that one absolutely in there. Um, a second one that was one of the three that she mentioned was um, that she didn't mention Johnny Depp's name. Perfectly reasonable to say, well, hey, is it defamation if I haven't mentioned his name? I could have been talking about someone else. And even though there's bits that sort of make it look likely to be Johnny Depp, there's, he, she hasn't actually mentioned his name. And they could say, well, really, because she hasn't mentioned his name explicitly, shouldn't be doing it. Um, and equally, there was uh, the fact that, well, I suppose actually, I suppose that she didn't publish it either. She could say, well, she didn't write the article, somebody else did. Uh, and, and, and along those lines, those ones are perfectly reasonable. I don't mind those ones. Um, but, yeah, it's, it caught, sort of could, should have been, that was one point. The UK case is one point. And then I think the third one that she should have had is a freedom of speech thing. And saying, oh look, you know, I'm allowed to have an opinion and it's stated as my opinion, not as a fact. And if it's stated as opinion, it's not normally prosecutable as far as defamation. Now, you can still state something as an opinion and then it can be interpreted as a fact and therefore it can be prosecutable. Um, and therefore you can get in trouble for that as far as defamation is concerned. But ordinarily, if you state this opinion, it's fine. So as long as she said, in my opinion, this is what happened, perfectly fine. She's allowed to say that, even if she had mentioned his name. But she didn't mention his name, she said as an opinion, and she'd already won the UK trial. Those should have been the three points. Now, what is that likely to work? Now, I would put a percentage figure on Johnny Depp's and I would say 95%. And the other thing is because they're essentially all the same point, they don't counter each other. So, you know, in mathematics we might say, oh yeah, if it's 50%, but then there's three and they're contradictory, then you do 50 times 50 becomes 25 times 50 again becomes 12 and a half. But we don't have to worry about that because all of his, three of his are essentially the same point. So it's just straight 95%. 
not a guarantee, but pretty close to a guarantee. I'd be very surprised if he didn't win that. Now, not completely shocked because you see funny things in court, but I would think he would win that. Now, as for Amber Heard's, can she win as well? Um, I would say the strongest of them is that she's won the UK case. So I'd put that around 10%. Um, then you have the other ones like you have, you know, she didn't mention his name, but I still think, I don't think that's going to work because you can work out it was him. So I'm going to put that about 5%. And then I think the third one was, well, she's allowed to say things she said as opinion, but I don't think she really did say it as opinion. So I'm putting that maybe 2%. Even still, if you had those three, and the problem is they're not the same argument. So they're three different arguments. So you need to have them working together. 10% times 5% equals 0.5% times two equals so tiny that you're not gonna hear it. And then we've got 13 more points. And this is where it gets ridiculous. So I think if she goes ahead with 16 points and that becomes her actual appellate brief, I don't think it'll be heard. So the, the appellate court don't have to hear every case. They only have to hear the ones that they think are a chance of succeeding. I think they will hear Johnny Depp's. Oh, based on what I've seen of the 16, I don't think they'll hear Amber Heard's. I think it's very unlikely that they'll hear it, let alone actually have an appeals court. Um, I mean, appeals are only heard in the most extreme of cases. I think they will hear Johnny Depp's, because um, this is uh, absolute miscarriage of justice that she won her counterclaim. That's an absolute miscarriage of justice. Nobody's really making a big song and dance about her, but from a legal point of view, that was appalling. Um, <laughs> she should never have won the counterclaim. Um, was it the error of the judge? <sighs> a little bit, um, but you know, I think it's more the system that sort of allowed that in there. Um, it, it should have been an either or, it shouldn't have been, you can do both. But, so, what, what do I think is really going on? Why has Amber Heard mentioned 16 points? Now, I've said this before, I think that Amber Heard is playing a bit of a game. I think that she's mentioned 16 points because she wants that to appear in newspapers and so she can say to people, hey, I would have won my case if I just had enough money. So she's, because most people are here, Oh, 16 points, oh, that means you're more likely to win. He only had three, and no newspaper's even mentioning the three. Or well, none that I could find. Maybe, oh, actually, there are a couple that are mentioning it, but not as much. It's not getting as much um, news coverage as her 16. So she can all go give interviews later and say, oh, look, you know, I was innocent. I would have won. It's just the legal system's unfair. It's unfair against women. You know, blah, blah, blah. It's unfair against poor people like me. Not so famous, all that sort of stuff. So. You know, that's, I think, what she's doing. My viewpoint, my opinion, my guess, my prediction is that she will not go ahead with her appeal. I would be very surprised. I, this thing with 16 points tells me she's not going ahead with it. But we'll see. She might, and she might even be listened to by an appeals court. I think that's ex even less likely. But who knows? You never know what might happen. Anyway, that's it from me. Bye-bye.